Today, Elon Musk of Tesla and SpaceX unveiled the Hyperloop concept. I was so enthralled that I completely forgot to write a show intro. That's because I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Books and Beer, your suborbital flight to the near reaches of indie publishing space. My name is Jeff Moriarty with ePublish Unum, and our topic today is sharing quality content for authors. Evo, uh, what are you drinking? Because I'm sure even if Elon Musk distracted you from everything else, he would not, could not distract you from beer. You are exactly correct about that, my friend. I do have a beer. Um, I've got one from the Lips of Faith series, typically not my go-to style, but I couldn't resist the idea of a coconut curry Hefeweizen. I might find myself able to resist such a thing. Um, I foresee, with my psychic powers, a great deal of bathroom time in your future, in one way or another. Um, I am drinking one of our gut shot stouts, one of our home brews. It was right there in front of the fridge, and I hadn't had it in a while, so that's what I've got on tap. A repeat, but a good one. Tasty, tasty beverage. Well, that yes. shall conclude the beer portion of the program. Let's jump into the books, shall we? So we're talking about content, social, how authors should be sharing content on social. It's a topic you and I have uh, come to grips with uh, individually as well as created some great content for people, and I think we want to share with them today. So you want to talk a little bit, Jeff, about the cake model? The cake. Mmm, cake. Uh, the cake is not a lie, the cake is truth. So this came out of a talk that we gave at an indie publishing conference here in town about a year ago, and we wanted to talk to people about not the mechanics of social media, but how to really be a good, you know, share quality content and interact and not piss everyone off. And through the discussion, it, it came about like a recipe. And, you know, in a recipe, and cake being the one that we... Uh, shows, you have things like salt, which you need in small doses, yet if you put in too much, you're going to have a very, very disgusting cake. And the analogy to how a lot of authors, a lot of people in general share on social media, was that they tend to, you know, the salt is asking for uh, them to buy their book or to take an action, a very selfish kind of demand their overall cake of content, the model only goes so far before it starts to break down, but it does break down into sweet, crumbly goodness. Unless, uh, of course, you're a deer, and then a salt cake is perfect. Yes. Okay, right. Thanks. Why would you even drive me into the mud over there? You know I'm going to get stuck. Okay. So we came up with this model for sharing content, saying, look, if you're going to build a cake and you want something tasty and delicious that all of your fans are going to come and want to eat from, you're going to need to put things in the proper order. And looking at the ingredients of a cake, we map them to uh, five different categories of posts, trying to encourage people to put asking for something, like buy my book, as the pinch of salt at the that's about that's about accurate, right? So it, we've covered five different stages, or five different um, not stages. That's the wrong way to say it. There are five stages of publishing. Sorry, we cover these five ingredients, and and they are quickly interacting, sharing, supporting, informing, uh, and finally asking the salt, as Jeff said. But one thing that we got out of that uh, lesson, everybody raised their hand when we were done and said. Exactly what ratio should I be doing of each of those? And we said, no, no, you don't understand. That's 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 really not the way. It's not the way that it works. It's more about keep these things in mind. Do more of these. So yeah, we 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 were forced to do that one. So that led us to this little piece of paper that you see if you're watching this uh, in front of me here. And Jeff has one very similar for that. We created this litmus test by which uh, it is a self-test for you to go through to the content that you, the author, are sharing out on your social platforms. And it, it by and large, there's a, Jeff's got a, a great example of it up on the screen right now. It, it does a great job, regardless of the platform, Jeff's Facebook, I've got mine on Google+, but the same concepts hold true on 
Twitter or wherever else. And the concept is simple. You identify your posts and you go through the list and you make little tick marks and you see how you're doing. Test yourself to see whether or not you are pulling it off. So you ran through the list. Uh, you, you named them off there, but uh, how about we go through them in a little bit more detail? Go. And for anyone uh, wondering, no, I'm not going to map these to the rest of the recipe because I learned that mistake in the conference when people said, what, what, no, you've got your ratios wrong and you Where's need to the see vanilla? my recipe. Apparently, I am the only person not a baker, so we are not going to discuss eggs and milk. Right. Okay, the first category is interactive. And this is actually posting some content that you have really developed yourself that is going to get people to talk with you. You're actually having a conversation. Uh, to me, this also includes getting involved and in leaving comments and actually facilitating uh, a, a dialogue where you're not leading it, you're not setting the entire tone, but you are having an honest, open you know, interaction. Number two, so a little bit less, sharing. This is something you're more passing on. Maybe something you really haven't uh, you know, curated yourself. You might have some commentary on it. You're not just saying, here's a fun link. But something you're moving along down the line, explaining, explaining why you found it interesting and passing it on to your followers. The third one, kind of in the middle here, uh, supporting. And this is actually taking time to help someone out with a question that they have. Not, again, passing it on or whatever, but saying, hey, I, I saw you were asking a question about, say, digital publishing, and I'm just going to hop in and answer that. So it's really just taking time to support someone else. It's a great thing to do, and people appreciate it, but realistically, it's hard to do all the time unless you're, you're paid. So it's kind of the middle of the pack. Then comes informing, just saying, hey, here's an FYI. I've hit this word count as an author, or here's what's going on today, or I'm, I'm going to be on vacation for a week. Brief, informative, doesn't add a lot of value. You don't want a lot of those in the mix. And last, yeah, and I guess least, is asking. So that's just the flat out, hey, gimme, gimme, gimme. I want you to read this, go, you know, like this, share this with your friends, pass it on, buy my book, whatever it happens to be. It's the selfish, it's the this is helping nobody but me. But unfortunately, it's what a lot of people put at the top. So that's kind of the breakdown of those particular categories. And for me, it was really illuminating taking the armchair exercise of going through that list and thinking, yeah, that sounds like a good way to do it. That sounds like somebody that I would want to follow. And then running my own content through it and going, ooh, hmm. Well, the thing to remember here, Jeff, is that while you and I do happen to be authors, uh, that is not our primary goal of engaging in the social thing. We have lots of different things that, that we are doing, and so uh, we are not good role models. Hell, we're not good any kind of models, but <laughs> nonetheless, we are going to use ourselves and walk you through exactly what we did. Sh shall I go first? Go right ahead. I will. So for me, I've done this before. This is my second time going through this list, and good news, I have improved. So if, if I can change, you can change too. There's hope for everyone uh, in this one. Um, so when I went through, again, we said that uh, the idea behind this checklist, and by the way, you can get the checklist for free um, on our website, ePublish Unum. Just look around for Jeff's, pe uh, Jeff's book, which he wrote, which was creating, yes, uh, fabulous... Yes, Facebook pages, and then mine, which was <laughs> making killer Google Plus profiles. So these are part of the modern indie author's guides that we've put out there. Uh, it's really the same checklist on either one of those pages you get to. It's free PDF. Download it. Do whatever. Um, if you're going to check on Facebook, obviously get the Facebook, and if you're going to check on Google, get the Google Plus one because it, we, we've given you some various tips of what to look like. Um, so for me, the, the, the biggest one is supposed to be interacting, right? Um, I did that five times in, in the 27 posts it required me to go through and check so that I had one check in the box. You see, the concept is you, you either go to 50 of your last posts or until you've had one tick mark in each box. So by the time I checked 27 before I got them on all my boxes, and I only had five in the interacting. So you don't have to be a math whiz to recognize that that was not the majority. 
the majority of the posts I made were not interacting. Um, in fact, the majority of my posts were the second thing that we have listed, which is sharing. That's passing along interesting things. Uh, typically, mine was sharing somewhat about digital publishing. Um, almost nothing shared uh, about uh, interesting things about beer passed on. But most of mine was the, the space and sciencey stuff, like I started the show with, that I'm interested in. That's where most of my sharing was. And then just general weirdness that, that looks interesting. Um, my biggest problem is supporting. I only had two, uh, one in the supporting category. And to me on Google Plus, this is, as Jeff said, providing specific knowledge. But to me, it's about writing a really engaging um, post that talks about solving a problem inside of whatever it happens to be. I don't do that enough. I do it a little bit in the video, and so it's kind of tough to, to gauge. Um, so that's rough for me. I, I do lots of little informing things. And so all my beer posts I put down as informing. That's just, I'm just putting it out there. I don't expect you to respond. Maybe give a little plus one. I do that. Way too many of those, like nine, just one below my sharing. Um, but the good news is I only ask for something twice. So I had the least amount, well, supporting was well, close enough. One, two, I'm not going to quibble over small numbers, but so not too terribly shabby. How'd you do, Jeff? So interesting similarities here. A question, though, just to clarify. So you put all of plus ones. If you just like to post, plus one, did all of those went under? I didn't, I didn't actually count any of those. That's one of the challenges behind this one. For me, I opted to look at just simply new content I created. So I share and inter or I interact a lot with people in comments. I plus one lots of things and I didn't count any of that activity. I just counted brand new content produced. See, you can do this as you see fit. Intriguing. But yes, I was about to make that same point that there's only a certain amount of objectivity you can bring to this and you know the rest of it is kind of up to you how you call it. So when I got to likes on Facebook, I debated the same thing. Should I go just through posts? or count likes, and I ended up counting likes, and I put them under under uh, informing, because they're, I am passing some information on. Somebody who has that post sees, hey, Jeff showed up to say, I find this interesting, I like this, not enough to leave any comment or explain why, but I've left a little bit of information and I've moved on. So somebody can see that, oh, okay, that was intriguing. So just saying literally, I like that, I counted it, so uh, so that skewed my informing high because you know I think both on Google Plus and Like if you if you lump in plus ones and likes that's going to raise that category quite a bit. It probably will. So I had uh, interacting at the top, um, or as the first category I should say, uh, came in at about ten percent of what I uh, what I posted, but sharing uh, like you was was far larger. And I've shifted this as well since we first came up with this chart, pushing more to even when I pass things on, making sure I put original content there, and going further than that. And if I get an idea from an external post, I take that and I really try to digest it and make that something that I'm really putting out as interactive content, not just, hey, guys, check this out. This is cool. So shifting up, supporting, same boat as you. Uh, I came in at about 3% there. Uh, a couple where I hopped in to answer questions for people, but you know I could be doing that a lot more. And I had exactly, uh, I'd already covered informing, and for asking I had uh, exactly two. And one of those was uh, you know, talking about her book and was a request to read uh, an other fiction piece that I'm working on. So, so about the same. But you made yeah. the comment earlier. You made the comment earlier that um, you know we're not good examples. You know, and this is you know something we're putting together for authors. I think this is a good rule of thumb for anyone. If you are really down at the bottom of this kind of list, and the content you're putting out is really just asking for stuff for you and not providing anything new out there, you're not a very interesting person to interact with online. My two cents, anyway. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna agree with that definitely. So when I'm talking about not using us as a, as role models and the fact that you and I are probably going to share and do more of the informing stuff than than the typical people will because that's kind of what we do. But regardless, your last point is clear. I don't care who you are, asking should always be the smallest piece. If not, I, I really don't care about what you have to say. If you're just simply looking at social media as a marketing platform, you're already doing it wrong. Um, this can help. 
I agree. And one other thing that I'd address when we put this up there and we encouraged authors to not do much asking, you know, we had some feedback. Well, what's the point then? And the contention is if you're really engaging and sharing and connecting with people who are interested in you and your work, you don't need to ask them. If they know your book is new book is coming out or you're speaking somewhere or you need some help, they're going to pick that up through all of the other content and they're just going to help out. You don't need to do as much asking if you maintain a healthy balance of content. Exactly right. I have no other words of wisdom, so I will end on that fantastic note. Thank you, sir. Interesting to see how closely we came to each other. Hmm. We should go in business together. Oh, wait. So we shall bring the broadcasted, recorded portion of, well, the recorded portion of the Books and Beer Hangout to a close. If you are watching us live, hey, guess what? Now is the time we ask or answer your questions that we've done. But we will end the recording here and put this out to the live. So that means I should remind you that speaking of asking, we have some books. You should go buy them. Yeah, we already said that. So I'll skip on to this part. Show notes, you'll find those, um, although it's just going to be links to the books we talked about in these listings here, um, at booksandbeer.com. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublish Unum. We create workshops, guidebooks, and roadmaps to help indie authors cut through the complexity of today's publishing world. Sound interesting? More info at ePublishUnum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I am Evo Terra. Thanks for being a part of the show.